Hey, Carrie here. I've titled this video, Investing in Your Future, because I think we're about to step into an age of investment opportunity that last came with the introduction of the internet. And as with the introdu introduction of the internet, it really made a big difference based on who you invested in. There's two parts of it. There were the people who built the internet, and that was the Intels and uh, the Qualcomm's and numerous other infrastructure builders. And then there were the people who monetized the internet. And those were the Googles, Apples, Facebooks, Microsofts, and Amazons. They were the big winners. We are about to step into the next revolution of technology. And it's going to be built around the internet, but it's going to be built around big data. Now, over the last 10, 15 years, there have been a number of companies who have been gathering the data to roll back what happened a bit. We started with the cell phone that provided us with a connection, ultimately, with the internet. Google and Apple created apps which allowed smaller companies who wanted to market something to use their computer capability to make their apps function. The big player in that became Amazon with Amazon Web Services. And they basically said, you can use our storage facilities, our computer capabilities at next to no cost if you'll put your apps in our domain. That gave them the ability to capture all that data. Well, something comparable has just happened, and that's quantum computing. Quantum computing, to make it easier to understand, is this is what a supercomputer looked like. This is what a quantum computer looks like. The difference is, back on October 23rd, Google took its quantum computer and set it up against IBM's largest and fastest supercomputer to solve a given problem. Google's quantum computer solved that problem in 2,000 seconds. IBM projected that their supercomputer would be able to solve that same problem in 10,000 years. This is huge. What they just said was, we now have the capability to compute, to manage, to analyze all this data that we've been collecting over the last 10, 15 years. A24 unable to do this. Now, the next stroke of genius was that both Amazon and IBM has put a message out to the computing world that you can have access to our quantum computers at no charge to work out your problems and then put them through our com quantum computers and to see if it will solve the problem you set out to solve. It's just like, come store your data with us. What they are basically saying, we have this super machine, we now need software that will work the data to solve the problems. Now, their other option was to go out and hire people, the brightest minds in the computing world, and do that in their own silo. But they have said, no, we are going to make it available to the computing world. That just sped up the development of quantum computing exponentially. Now, what does this mean to you? We'll get to that in a minute. I think what I'd like to do is spend the next three minutes 
giving you a basic tutorial on what quantum computing is all about. I'm not capable of doing that myself. So I'm going to call upon Alia Gershom. She is an engineer, a scientist at IBM. I'm going to let her explain to you the basics and then build you up step by step in the next three minutes of what quantum computing is all about and give you some insight as to how it's going to change your world and the whole world and how it is so important to you if you're an investor, if you're a business executive, if you're a student, if you intend to buy any major stock purchase or any major purchase of anything in the next 12 months and beyond. So here's Talia. Hi, my name is Talia Gershon and I'm a scientist at IBM Research. Quantum computers approach solving problems in a fundamentally new way. And we hope that by taking this new approach to computation, we'll be able to start exploring some problems that we could never solve any other way. What do you think this is? A. Yeah. Do you know what your computer thinks that is? Zero and one. <laughs> <laughs> this really specific combination of zeros and ones. Everything that your computer does, showing you Pink Panther videos on YouTube, calculating things, searching the internet, it does all of that with a really specific combination of zeros and ones, which is crazy, right? That would be like saying your computer only understands these quarters. For each quarter, you need to tell it that you're going to use heads, tails, and you assign it heads or tails. So I can switch between heads and tails, and I can switch the zeros and ones in my computer so that it represents what I want it to represent, like an A. And with quantum computers, we have new rules we get to use, too. We can actually spin one of our quarters. Uh -huh. so okay, that's computing 101. Now Tala is going to take us into how quantum computing takes you from 101 to a new world. That operate by a totally different set of rules. So do you know what that is? I have no <laughs> clue. It's a quantum computer. I explain it using this giant penny. I can put it face up, right, and that's heads. I can put it face down, right? So at any given time, point in time, if I ask you, is my penny heads or tails, probably you could answer it, right? Yeah. Okay. But what if I spin the penny? It's sort of a combination of heads and yeah, tails, yeah. right? Would you say? So superposition is this idea that my penny is not just either heads or tails. It's in this state, which is a combination of heads and tails. And this quantum property is something that we can have in real, real physical objects in the world. So that's superposition. And the second thing that we'll talk about is called entanglement. So now I'm going to give you a penny. Wow! <laughs> When we use the word entangled in everyday language, what do we mean? That something's intertwined or... Exactly, that there's two things that are connected in some way, and usually we can separate them again. In the quantum world, when we entangle things, they're really now connected. And it's much, much harder to separate them mm -hmm. again. So using the same analogy, we okay. spin our pennies and eventually... <laughs> eventually they both stop, right? And when they stop, it's either heads or tails, right? Mm -hmm. So in my case, I got tails and you got heads. You see how they're totally disconnected from each other. We're not envisioning quantum computers completely replacing classical computers anytime soon. We think that quantum computing is going to be used to accelerate the kinds of things that are really hard for, for classical machines. There's three free quantum computers that are all sitting in this lab here that anyone in the world can access through the cloud. OK, <laughs> so quantum computing creates new possibilities and new ways to approach problems that classical computers have difficulty doing. Couldn't have said it better. It's going to give us the opportunity to solve problems that before were incapable of solving. The supercomputer just was not capable, but the quantum computer gives us that capability. So, okay, what might that mean to you? Let's start on a low scale that your phone, which I did in another video, said that uh, your phone would have a virtual assistant, that you could speak into your phone or your smart home device or your smart car device and say, set me an appointment with my doctor. 
that virtual assistant, aided by quantum computing, would gather all the information needed and set that appointment for you. That's basic. Let's go then a step up. Find me a house in Philadelphia that fits my needs and my family's needs, our likes, our dislikes, our needs, our desires, our church activities, our shopping activities, everything about us, and then bring it together with the homes and the neighborhoods in Philadelphia of which I have no knowledge. My virtual assistant, and as it was alluded to by Rich Barton of Zillow in a prior video that I did, your Zillow app will do just that for you. It will take all the data from your world and the Philadelphia world and the housing world, mesh them together in a matter of seconds, give you three choices of the best house for you and your family in Philadelphia. That's pretty cool. And Rich Barton alluded to it. Now, the thing that Rich is missing He's got the home data. He doesn't have my personal data. Now, I have alluded to you that there are a number of companies that have that data. And they are Google, they are Apple, they are Facebook, they are IBM, and they are Amazon. There's only one of those that has stepped into the real estate world, and that was Amazon when it partnered with Realogy. So Amazon has basically shot a gun over the bow of the others and said, this is our silo. Now, if you'll remember, I did a video on Google bought Fitbit, my, my tracker watch. That was Google shot over the bow saying, the healthcare area is going to be ours. Within three weeks, they entered into a partnership that is very questioned with Advent Hospitals and got them access to millions of people's healthcare records. Is this starting to fit together for you? They are wanting to tell Kerry by virtue of his new Fitbit, that he better get to a doctor within two weeks because he's going to have a stroke. That's coming in the future. How would he, they be able to do that? By gathering all the data that every clinical study that was performed over the last 10 years, because, and I know this because my daughter had cancer, entered into a clinical study and signed a document that said that all of her medical data would be available to Northside Hospital in Atlanta and whomever else they chose to make it available for the betterment of the hospital and humanity as a whole. So that data is there. So that even if they don't get my personal data, Fitbit has enough and enough data that Google will be able to notify me when I'm going to have a heart attack, particularly if I also have a smart toilet where my defecation is analyzed every, every time I go to the potty. Every time I pee, my urine is analyzed. I have an Alexa that I discuss my health conditions with my wife I have a phone that I carry when I go to the doctor that I discuss my health conditions in his office. Can you see how this is all going to come together? So the question then becomes, who do you identify as the ultimate winners in this data revolution? Okay, the data revolution is going to be driven by big data. We already know who has that data. It's then going to, through predictive analytics, machine learning, and quantum computing, and artificial intelligence, going to bring that all to our phone, all to our computer, all to our home 
operating system, which will come under the name of Alexa, uh, Facebook's Portal, or Google's Nest. They are going to create our smart homes, our smart cars, our smart phones that is going to gather even more data that is going to make our lives better. So who do you invest in? Do you invest in the people who are going to build this structure? Google and Amazon did not build their quantum computers. That was done by someone else. And if you dig, you can find their names. But the someone else didn't have the money to do it, so they went to the big giants and said, we'll develop them for you. You cut us in on the action. So the big winners are not going to be the builders. They're going to be the people who monetize. The same as that Apple, Facebook, IBM, Amazon, Tencent, and Abu Dhabi are the big winners of the internet. So you need to be channeling your life, your investments towards the big winner. And that's what's going to happen over the next 12 months. You are, uh, 12 months from now, December 2020, you will look back on this video and you will say, damn, he was right. And that will just be the beginning. So pay attention to this, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell and the bell will notify you because I've got another video right behind this that's going to give you more insight to what quantum computing is going to do to your life and how it's going to make it better. Okay, this is exciting and let's enjoy it.